Dear students, today I would like to continue my presentations about the connective tissue. Today I would like to show you the different types of the connective tissue. First, I would like to start a little repetition because in the earlier lectures I told you the different parts of the connective tissue. We saw the main compartments of the connective tissue. I demonstrated uh, the different cells of the connective tissue and in the last lecture I showed you the intercellular substance, the extracellular matrix of the connective tissue. What were the cells? We can talk about fixed cells and mobile cells in the connective tissue. We saw the fibroblast fibrocytes, the reticulum cells, the mesenchymal stem cells, Today I would like to talk uh, more about the adipocytes and you have a separated lecture from the chondrocytes, chondroblasts, from the cartilage and osteocytes, also osteoblast, the bony tissue. Also I showed you the histiocytes, the mast cells uh, in the last lecture and you have a lot of details about the special white white cells about the lymphocytes, plasma cells, uh, granulocytes in the lecture which is about the blood. And also I showed you the characteristics of the different fibers of the connective tissue. I showed you the collagen fiber, elastic fiber and reticular fibers and also I demonstrated the ground substance of the connective tissue, which consists of glycos, aminoglycans, proteoglycans, different adhesive molecules. We have some where we have a lot of water inside, for example, in the case of blood. And of course, we can find inorganic materials too within the ground substance. This is a special characteristic of the bones and teeth. You will have also a separated lecture about these structures. Let's see now the classification of the different connective tissue types. First, we can talk about two main groups, the embryonic connective tissue and the mature connective tissue. Within the embryonic connective tissue, I would like to show you two main types, the mesenchyme and the mucous connective tissue, which is the Wharton's jelly, a special connective tissue of the umbilical cord. And uh, if we see the major connective tissues, we can divide them into three main, three main parts, three main groups, depending on what is the dominant structure within the connective tissue. We can talk about fibers dominant, a connective tissue, for example, the loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, scar tissue, it is that type where the fibers are the dominant. When the cells will be the dominant, this is a cell uh, rich connective tissue, it's for example the white adipose tissue, the brown adipose tissue, and I will show you the areolar connective tissue, the reticular connective tissue, the spinocellular connective tissue. And also I show you here within this uh, uh, slide that group where the ground substance is the dominant in case of cartilage, bone, and for example in blood where the water is the dominant. But uh, because here we have a huge amount of ground substance, this, uh, these uh, tissues, we say that these are the supportive tissues, they are stronger. You have a separated lecture about the cartilage, the bone and the blood later on. Let's see now the first uh, type within the embryonic connective tissue group, the mesenchyme. Uh, in the last lecture I mentioned to you that we have a lot of embryonic stem cells, multipotent stem cells during the development and we can talk about mesenchymal stem cells or mesoblast. From these stem cells they can develop the different cell types, for example the myocytes 
osteocytes, chondrocytes, adipocytes, tendocytes. Here you can see this picture which uh, shows you all of the different cell types which can differentiate from the mesenchymal stem cells. And of course we can talk about another stem cell, the hemopoietic stem cell. From this can develop the different white blood cells, the red blood cells, the platelets. We have also separated lecture about the blood formation. I would like to mention uh, the parasites. The parasites, those are the cells which are located on the wall of the vessels and they are able to differentiate into smooth muscle cells, endothelial cells or fibrocytes too. It is a really interesting cell type, that's why I wanted to mention. Let's see uh, the characteristic of the mesenchyme. Uh, I showed you earlier this picture too, but uh, this is um, a schematic picture. You will learn it when you have the embryo lectures. Uh, the mesenchyme, this embryonic connective tissue, is visible within the cross-section of the placenta of the chorionic villi. Here we can see this embryonic connective tissue where we have the mesoblast, the spindle-shaped uh, cells with processes, they will form a three-dimensional meshwork. These cells, they will produce a lot of extracellular matrix. We have only just few fibers within them and uh, they are able to proliferate, differentiate and we can find also uh, these special stem cells in uh, later on in the adulthood too and these cells, they are involved in the regeneration of the different organs or unfortunately in case of oncogenesis, the formation of the different tumors. Okay, so the next is the next group within the embryonic connective tissue. This is the Wharton's jelly. The Wharton's jelly, uh, I think the students, they like so much this slide. They, which is the cross section of the umbilical cord. They say this is a smiley face or in this case, maybe it is surprised. Here you can see three cross-sections of different structures. We have two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. And these structures, they are surrounded by this very special um, connective tissue, which is called Wharton's jelly. If we see a higher magnification of this tissue, we can see the star-shaped cells um, uh, related, uh, related to the uh, fibrocytes, so similar. And these cells, they will produce the fibers and the ground substance of the Wharton's jelly. Within the ground substance, we have a huge amount of glycos, aminoglycans and hyaluronic acid. And because of these, uh, the sulfate groups of these disaccharide units, this will be basophilic with hematoxylin in staining. It binds a lot of water, that's why we have this jelly-like material. And uh, this jelly has really important function in the protection of the vessels which are located within the umbilical cord and will protect them against the compression within the cavity of the uterus during pregnancy. And um, uh, which is uh, important here that we have also an epithelium, an amnionic uh, epithelium, which will surround uh, the umbilical cord. And this, uh, uh, if we see the cross-section of the vessels, what we have within the umbilical cord, you see that the vessels, the arteries and the veins, they have a thicker uh, smooth muscle wall compared to the other middle-sized vessels in other parts of the body. It is also very important in the protection against the compression. We can find uh, this a type of connective tissue also within the pulp of the teeth. After the birth of the baby, uh, the, mostly the father, they cut the umbilical cord and the little part of the umbilical cord will remain on the 
uh, umbilicus on the surface of the abdominal wall, but because it is covered by a simple cuboidal amniotic epithelium, that's why the water is evaporated and it will dry and will uh, fall down from the surface of the stomach. That where is exactly the border between the body wall and uh, the simple cuboidal epithelium, the amniotic epithelium on the, of the umbilical cord, uh, it is uh, fixed during the development. Here you can see that during the folding, during the development, here we have the amnioembryonic groove, which will show the border between the anterior body wall and the umbilical cord. So this will be the border which will represent uh, the border between the skin and uh, the umbilical cord. So the shape of the umbilicus is not depending on where the father uh, made a section, it's depending on where we have the amnio, where we had the amnioembryonic groove during the development. And also I mentioned you uh, in the earlier lectures that we are able, we can collect stem cells from the placenta, we can collect hemopoietic stem cells, and also we can collect mesenchymal stem cells too. We can store it, it is a possibility here in Hungary, one, two percent of the pregnant women, they do this, um, they use this possibility. Um, we do not know what will be in the future, you know, there are a lot of experiments who are working on that, how we can use the special stem cells in the treatment of different leukemia, for example, or maybe they try to build new organs based on these cells, but of course this is the, this is the future, just I wanted to mention you this possibility. Let's see now the major connective tissues. First, that where the fibers are the dominant. Here within this group I would like to show you first the loose connective tissue. The loose connective tissue is a very huge range. Um, the loose connective tissue is the most common type of connective tissue in the body. Between the epithelium the muscle will fill spaces and it has a really important regulatory immune uh, function too and of course important in the mechanical protection. I will show you all of the special examples for this uh, function, but it is really important to understand that we have differences between loose connective tissue in different organs or within the different layers of one organ. For this I would like to show you some example. But if you see this uh, first with, with uh, this um, schematic picture about the loose connective tissue. Here you can see we have all of the different fibers, we can find different cell types and of course ground substance. Depending on where we are, different uh, compartments will be the dominant in the loose connective tissue. We can find loose connective tissue uh, within the wall of the organs under the epithelium. Here I am showing you the section from the wall of an intestine. Here you can see the intestinal villi formed by the um, tunica mucosa and under the epithelium mucosae which is simple columnar epithelium with microvilli within the lamina propria you can find loose connective tissue. Within this loose connective tissue in the body of the uh, villi you can see vessels. There we have the central lactal vessel which is responsible for the absorption of the fat. That is what we can find here. So this is also loose connective tissue. But if we see the other layer of the wall which is called tunica submucosa the tunica submucosa will, for the, will form the circular folds of the uh, intestine. Here we can find also blood vessels. Here is a lymph, lymphatic nodule, for example. But this loose connective tissue, what we can find here, is stronger than that connective tissue which is located in the lamina propria. 
Here, if you see, this is the last layer of the wool, which is called tunica muscularis, consists of smooth muscle. But what's the, that, what is the difference between the loose connective tissue, what we have in the lamina propria, or loose connective tissue, one with what we have in the tunica submucosa? For this, I would like to show you a picture from a very special familiar um, a tradition here in Hungary, which is in winter time when the family um, kills the pig uh, of of uh, the whole family, yeah, and to uh, to do a lot of very uh, special food like sausages. And here in Hungary, uh, the old women they have to clean the intestinal wool. They clean uh, the wool from the tunica sub, tunica mucosa and the muscularis and, also, and remain only just the tunica submucosa. Here you can see and the sausage is that. So the covering of the sausage will be the tunica submucosa of the wall of the intestine. So I hope that in this case you can imagine that how strong is this loose connective tissue compared to that, for example, what we have under the epithelium. The other very important function of the loose connective tissue is the immune regulation. It is involved in the inflammatory reactions, in the immune reactions. If I show you a picture from the trachea with pass staining, you can see a pseudostratified columnar epithelium with kinocelia. With pass staining, we can see the goblet cells. These are the goblet cells. And under the epithelium, you can see the lamina uh, membrana basalis. Lamina basalis, is it, it is pass positive it's because it contains a lot of reticular fibers. And under the connective tissue, we can find very huge, big, oval-shaped, pass-positive cells. They were the um, must cells of the connective tissue, contains heparin and histamine granules, and I told you all of the steps of the degranulation of the activation of these mast cells during allergic reactions. And here, if you see this picture from the connective tissue, here you can see also the mast cell. And within the connective tissue, we can find eosinophilic granulocytes too, which are also involved in the allergical reactions. The other uh, important function of the loose connective tissue to form different layers, different surroundings of the organs, for example, here you can see the esophagus, and the esophagus is covered by a connective tissue layer, which is called tunica adventitia. That organs which are not covered by peritoneum, for example, serous membrane, in this case, always we are talking about the tunica adventitia, which is the last layer of the organ of the wall. And also we can find tunica adventitia in the middle-sized vessels. This is the outermost layer of the vessels. We can talk about tunica intima, it is the innermost, tunica media, where we have a smooth muscle, and tunica adventitia, which is formed by the connective tissue. In the tunica adventitia of the veins, we can find cross-sections of smooth muscle cells, but you will learn this when you have a lecture about the structure of the middle-sized vessels and the vessels. And we can, we can find also connective, loose connective tissue between the different uh, other tissues. For example, between the muscle cells, this connective tissue system, which is loc located between the muscles, it is called endomysium. Here you can see cross-sections of smooth muscle cells and uh, skeletal muscles. It is a special slide. It is from the esophagus because the uh, middle lower part of the uh, esophagus, we can find also smooth muscle and skeletal muscle fibers too because you know the esophagus is continuation of the pharynx where we have skeletal muscle and after the smooth muscle will be dominant within the esophagus. So that's why 
we have one slide where we can see both of the different muscles, the smooth muscle and the skeletal muscle. Between them we have this endomesium, this loose connective tissue, which will contain smaller vessels. For example, this is the arteriole. The arteriole is a vessel with maximum three layers of smooth muscle cells. Here you can see the endothelium and one layer of smooth muscle is visible, so this is a small arteriole within this connective tissue. Also we have a connective tissue system in the peripheral nerve around the nerve fibers. This is called the endoneurium. Here we have also smaller vessels within this connective tissue part. But here I just mentioned it is not loose connective tissue because there the collagen fibers they will form a stronger layer. This is called the perineurium. What we learn also in a slide when we will see uh, the peripheral nerve cross section. This is uh, this was the loose connective tissue and now I would like to continue the description of the dense connective tissue. Within the dense connective tissue we can talk about irregular and regular dense connective tissue based on the orientation of the fibers. The first is the irregular dense connective tissue. Irregular connective tissue, collagenous connective tissue, is visible within the skin, within the second layer after the epidermis. We have the dermis and in the dermis, in the reticular part of the dermis, we can find uh, collagen fibers which will form a meshwork. And if you see the surface of your skin, you see this superficial Lay, I mean uh, lines, they are called the Langer's line, which will show you the orientation of the collagen fibers within the dermis of the skin. And of course the surgeons, they uh, always follow the direction of these lines, because if they cut perpendicularly to these lines, in this case uh, the healing of the different uh, injury it's, uh, it's not um, possible, the correct healing. Uh, also we have within the dermis of the skin, we have a lot of elastic fibers too. We know uh, the elastic special staining of the elastic fibers is the Ortsain staining. You can see dark uh, brownish fibers within the skin. Of course, which will, the number of this will decrease during the ages and of course that's why we have this change during the time in the skin. The other uh, group within the dense connective tissue is the regular connective tissue. I also showed you this picture, the dense regular coronageneous connective tissue from the tendon or the tail of the rat. Here you can see the collagen fibers. Between the collagen fibers we can find the tendocytes or fibrocytes is called tendinocyte in case of tendon, which are elongated uh, cells with sharp uh, ends. And if we see the schematic picture, you see that they have like a wings here, how they are located between the collagen fibers. We can find this dense regular collagenous connective tissue in the lowest part of the skin, in the subcutis between the fat. Uh, fatty tissue, they will form a septum. And also, I would like to show you the electromicroscopic picture about the structure, about the shape of the fibrocytes which are located between the collagen fibers. Okay. Where do we find dense regular collagenous connective tissue? I told you within the tendon and tail of the red, but we can divide it into two main parts. We have endotendinome, uh, where we have the vessels and the nerves. It is called the peritendinome internum. And the outermost part, we can say epitendinome, where we have also vessels and nerves. Dense regular collagenous connective tissue will surround the cartilages. It is called perichondrium. It has really important function in the growing 
of the cartilages in the ret regeneration and the growing of the cartilages. And also we can find a dense collagenous connective tissue sheet around the bones, which is called the periosteum, which is also important in the growing of the bone too. We can find this type of tissue in the ligaments, in the joint, I think you saw the knee joint in the anatomy practice. And we have some ligaments where the elastic fibers will be the dominant, dense elastic connective tissue like the ligamentum nuchae here in the nuchal region. The nuchal muscle will originate from this. Or we have a ligamentum flavum, the yellowish ligaments which are located between the vertebrae of the vertebral column. Because of the elastic fibers, we have this very special yellowish color. Uh, I would like to mention one example for the outermost layer of the eyeball. This is the tunica fibrosa. It consists of also dense uh, connective tissue, consists of a lot of collagen fibers. We can talk about two main parts of the tunica fibrosa. The uh, anterior part is called the cornea. This is like a window, we can uh, see through it, it is transparent because the collagen fibers, they have a very special shape. They have perpendicular directions on each other on different layers. That's why it will be transparent. But if we see the uh, background or the uh, back part of the eyeball, here we have also a lot of collagen fibers, but they have not such a special orientation like here in the corner. So that's why here we have a whitish capsule, whitish part. This is called the sclera. Here you can see the color of the sclera. We have a similar um, covering around the testis, for example, which is called tunica albugina. Albugina means white because of the collagen fibers. They will form a whitish sheet around this organ. Okay, and finally, only just I would like to tell you some words, only just a small repetition about the scar tissue, which is also a fibrous rich uh, connective tissue. I showed you this in the first lecture for the demonstration of the fibrocytes and fibroblasts in the scar tissue. Here we can see a scar tissue eight weeks after the injury. You see that the collagen fibers, they are located there. They are not organized in a direction. And uh, we have a lot of fibroblasts, act activated cells between them with a lot of processes and basophilic cytoplasm because they produce the fibers and ground substance. And that's why they have a basophilic cytoplasm because of the rough and the plasmic reticulum. And if we see the other, the intact uh, tissue, here the collagen fibers, they are oriented and we have small fibrocytes in active cells here. Uh, if you see with Orsain staining that part from the skin, we see that in the scar tissue we have no elastic fibers, we have no hair follicles, and we can see this. But in case of the normal skin, we can see glands and a lot of elastic fibers within the tissue. Let's see the next group, which is the cell that. Uh, group of the connective tissue where the cells are the dominant. Uh, this is the white adipose tissue, the first what I would like to show you. I think you know very well what is the white adipose tissue. We know the cell because we saw it in a lot of slides until this. The diameter is 100 micrometer. It is very good to know because fat cells could be in different organs and if you know the diameter of the adipocyte, after you can compare all of the other structures to that, and you can um, tell the approximately, approximate uh, diameter of the different uh, structures. Uh, within the adipocyte, the fat is stored within one locule. It's called unilocular fat uh, lipid droplets we have within the cytoplasm. It's surrounded by bimentin and special inter media filament. And uh, what you can see that this unilocular fret 
uh, droplet will uh, push the nucleus and all of the cell organelles to the periphery and that's why they have a special um, shape like an engaged ring or ring what we can say here you can see and we have a lamina basalis around and reticular fibers which will surround the cells. If you see the higher magnification of the fat, between the fat cells we can see a very rich capillary meshwork. That's why we use this slide also to demonstrate to ask the smallest vessels the capillaries within the slide. What's the function? of the white adipose tissue. The white adipose tissue has a really important mechanical function uh, and that's why we have some uh, parts of the body where this fat will remain after a very long starvation too. So for example in the palm, in the orbit, in the capsule uh, of the kidney and also we can find this very, very special type of uh, white fat within the buccum uh, between the chewing muscles and the mimical muscles. It's called the bishat fat pad. It has a really important function during the breastfeeding of, uh, of the newborns. Of course it has a very important energy a storage function and isolation function too. Of course the different gender they different in um, based on the amount of fat within the body. In female we have more amount of fat uh, around the mammary gland, the gluteal region and in the femoral region too. In male, mostly the fat is located in the abdominal region, but of course the body weight, the percentage of the fat is depending on a lot of uh, factors like hormonal factors and the genetical backgrounds too. And here you can see a scale for the body mass index. This is a normal range and here you can see that we can count also the overweight and the underweight patient too. With normal uh, food and activity with sports, of course we can keep our body mass uh, index within the normal range. But of course we have a huge amount of fat within the body cavities around the organs. For example, in the pericardium, in the mesentery, you can see very well this picture within this image. And it is really important to know that if we have more fat within the uh, body cavities, within the organs, of course it's much more dangerous than uh, if we have more fat, for example, around the gluteal region or uh, out in the outer surface of the abdominal wall. It has really important secretory function too. We have different hormones which are secreted by the fat cells, like the leptin, which can regu regulate the appetite and the weight gain can decrease, and the adiponectin too, which will increase the fatty acid oxidation, decrease the plasma triglyceride uh, level and the glucose, increase insulin sensitivity and it is also really important to know that the fat is really important substance for the uh, synthesis of the steroid hormones like the estrogen so that's why in case of anorexia you see that these uh, patients unfortunately they have problem with the hormonal regulation with the menstrual cycle too. The development of the adipocyte is also a really important point what we have to discuss. They originate from the mesenchymal cells and more fat will be uh, stored within the cytoplasm. They are called lipoblasts. And finally you can see the uh, major adipocyte. And this type of fatty involution we can find it also in the adulthood. For example in case of the fatty involution of the thymus because first, after, until the puberty, it has a really important function in the development of the T lymphocytes. But after we have the adipose thymus because of this fatty involution. And we can see the same 
within the diaphysis of the bone. You know, this is the fatty bone marrow, which is really special food. It has a really important gastronomic um, quality. Uh, so this was the white adipose tissue and now I would like to tell you some words about the brown adipose tissue. The brown adipose tissue is darker, is brownish because of the lipofuscin pigments within the cytoplasm. If we compare it with the white adipose tissue within the cytoplasm, we can find multilocular lipid droplets. Uh, it's multilocular compared to the uh, white fat, where we have only just one unilocular fat droplet. And that's why, we, because we have a lot of uh, uh, multilocular droplets, that's why the nucleus is not pushed to the peripheral part and it is spherical. Between that, between that we have a lot of mitochondria and these cells, they have a very special mitochondria because of the thermogranin molecule, the mitochondria, they will produce heat and that's why this type of fat is really important in the thermoregulation. Of course it has a very rich capillary meshwork, uh, we can show capillaries there and uh, we can compare the brown fat with the white fat within this picture because it contains also some white fat cells too. Uh, where do you uh, have, where do we find brown adipose tissue? Very huge uh, amount of brown adipose tissue we have in animals who are able to hibernating, so they are sleeping during the winter time. Here you can see if you compare the white fat with the brown fat, they have different color. And also we have in newborns, mostly between the interscapular regions and the, uh, around the kidney and thymus, we can find also very huge amount of brown fat, which is important in the reg thermoregulation of the newborns. Uh, at the end of the description of the fat, I would like to tell you some words about the special staining of the fat. We can talk about two different stainings of the fat. The one is the physical staining. What does it mean? It means that that staining dissolves better in fat compared to the water and that's why for example the pepper it is also very good fat staining because you can see this is a guillage soup I think you know it very well it's a tra traditional Hungarian food on the top we can see fat islands stained with pepper that's why they had red color and uh, because the pepper is dissolved better in the fat compared to the water. And we, I can mention here the Sherlock H, Sudan B staining, where you can see the fat cells within the RL tissue. And for this, I uh, would like to show you one. It was on my present from Professor Reglody from the US. If I turn it, you can see very well how the, yeah, how the pinkish smaller bubbles they are moving because uh, this is a, like an oil and we use the very special staining for that to demonstrate the smaller bubbles so this is a very good demonstration for you for the physical staining of the fat and after uh, I can talk about uh, chemical staining of the fat, which is the osmium tetroxide. Here you can see the four oxygen uh, molecule and to the osmium. And after, with the reaction of the fat, it will be oxygen dioxide, uh, osmium dioxide, which has a dark color. This is one of the chemical staining of the fat. We will use it during the staining or during the demonstration of the peripheral nerve slide. And finally, only I would like to tell you some words about the last three ones. Uh, the RL connective tissue is also a cell-rich connective tissue, which is located between the peritoneum layer of the uh, intestine. Here we can find a lot of fat cells, fibrocytes, uh, histiocytes, lymphocytes, vessels. You will see this tissue 
when we will start the dissection of the intestinal walling of the intestinal abdominal cavity in the second uh, semester. And the reticular connective tissue is also that connective tissue where we have a lot of cells. Here I also mentioned this is a special connective tissue of the spleen, bone marrow, tonsil, lymph node. The reticular fibers, they will form a meshwork. They are consist of type 3 collagen fibers. And the special staining is a pass, that's why we can see it. And within the cross point, we can find the reticulum cells, which will produce the fibers and the ground substance of the tissue. And between them, we can see the lymphocytes. I mentioned this connective tissue earlier. And finally, the spinocellular connective tissue. It is a very a special uh, connective tissue in the uterine tube, in the ovary, and also in the endometrium. This is the uterus. It's a special connective tissue of the female genitalia organs. And in the endometrium, this cell-rich connective uh, tissue will change. The cells, they will store a lot of nutrition inside because they are waiting for the implantation. These cells will be the food of the implanted embryo in the first stage of the implantation. These cells, they are called decidua cells within the endometrium. But you will learn this in the second semester when we will see the slides from the female genitalia portion. This was the last slide that I, what I wanted to show you in the connective tissue. And now, I would like to thank you for your attention and I hope that you can answer all of the questions about the connective tissue in the exam. See you later.